Hey guys, it's Javad. It's been a while since I uh, vlogged about speaker building, but uh, today is the day to do a new vlog and uh, let you guys know about what's going on with a new project I'm, I'm working on. So the Enthralls project, hopefully you've been following that uh, on the DIY loudspeaker project pad. Uh, if you're not familiar with the project, it's uh, under the announcements on the Facebook page and uh, a lot of detail, a lot of information that I've posted. Uh, latest I've posted is the final crossover design and schematic. And um, I'm probably gonna do a part 14 about just final enclosure assembly. And then uh, the final will be uh, the, the photography session that I do, photographing the final finished enthralled speaker. And uh, I'm waiting on a couple cool little trick things um, that I'm finishing up on those. And uh, when I do that, I think I'll be ready to, to take the photos and, and post it. So look for that in the next few weeks. But in the meantime, I'm starting a new project called The Rivalries. So this project is my Indiana 2019 project. Indiana is a DIY event in, you guessed it, Indiana. And it's a kind of a cool name because it's I-N capital D-I-Y Anna. Uh, and it's a DIY speaker building event. I've gone the last two years Last year's project was the Pretty Persuasions, which is also documented on the Facebook page. And uh, the year before that, I did uh, a three liter project called the Microfarads, which uh, the Microfarad version ones, which are online. If you want to Google them, uh, you'll find uh, some build threads that I did on Parts Express Tech Talk forum there. So this year's theme, there's a theme every year with Indiana, and this year's theme is uh, well, let's, let's just say, last year's theme was a coax design. Could have been a coax two-way or three-way. Uh, that was called Keeping Up with the Joneses, which, hi, Andrew Jones. Uh, Andrew Jones came and showed up, which was awesome to get to hang out with that guy. Hopefully, hoping he comes this year, too. Andrew, you should come. Um, but this year, um, gosh, what is this year's theme called? I forget what the name is, but basically the concept is uh, a, a two-way speaker with five components in the passive crossover. So th these, these themes are always challenging. Uh, last year was using a coax, which I know a lot of people love coaxes, but they're not, they're not, they're not all they're cracked up to be, and they're uh, not as easy to work with as you might hope. Uh, the year before that was uh, a micro speaker with only three liters of total volume. Uh, air volume. And uh, so this year's is um, this five component passive crossover. So five, five is tough. Four would be ludicrous. I mean, it would be pretty tough, like, kind of pointless. Five's pushing it. Basically, five gives you two components for the woofer, two components for the tweeter, and one component to pad the tweeter. Uh, if you're good enough to match the tweeter sensitivity to the woofer, you won't need it, but I don't know. I, I, I'd be skeptical of, I've, I've never done a, a passive crossword design without some padding to, to fine tune uh, the tweeter level to the woofer. So it's, it's, five is kind of the minimum you would ever need and it's pushing it. So uh, I'm calling it the rivalries for one because it's a contest. Indiana is a competitive contest and there are some rivalries there. And uh, number two is I'll be using uh, some seven inch woofers by Rival Acoustics. So uh, I won these at Iowa DIY. I got them for free. Now this, this theme is a $300 budget. So it means that you can only spend $300 on all the drivers for both cabinets and the crossover components. So that's pushing it. I mean. 300 is not nothing, but it's it's pushing it. Um, and so, you know, these these woofers, I think, come in at around uh, 70, 75 bucks. And so they're they actually pretty well behaved. Um, they have a, a real flat frequency response. They'll do good bass in about a one cubic foot enclosure. And um, they have a relatively smooth roll off uh, above 2000 hertz. So I think I can work with these uh, so, so that's what I'm doing. So then the trick was to match a tweeter up to these things. 
And after doing a bunch of research and looking around and seeing some different options, I have chosen this. SB26 STAC-C004-4. Bo, you guys need easier names. So this is a great little tweeter, 26 mil dome. Let's take a look at it here. So this is about a $45 tweeter with an aluminum faceplate, which is a nice touch. Very shallow waveguide and um, a nice tuned chamber. Um, these are four ohms. And uh, so this is a tweeter that a lot of people love and Jeff Bagby raves about this thing as well for the money, it's pretty tough to beat. And this thing has uh, a very smooth response. It's very well behaved in the way it rolls off. And I should have no trouble taming this thing with a 12 dB slope and uh, a, a simple resistor to pat it down. So um, that's the tweeter. Let's take a look at these uh, Rival Acoustics woofers. Gasket, nice touch. So this is the Rival Acoustics R176-P-08. A really nice uh, woofer, very substantial. It has a, a non-pressed kind of a pulp paper cone. A lot of travel. I think it's about eight mil of X Max. You can see it's got plenty. Nice big magnet. Nice sized voice coil. And um, I don't know if you can see, but there is a, a copper cap there, which is always a nice touch. Helps flatten out the inductance. Um, so this is this is a really nice, good quality woofer. I've never used anything from Rival, so I wanted to check it out. And I got them for free and, you know, it's the least I could do is someone gives me some free woofers. Let me uh, put them to good use and see what they can do. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll be uh, interested to work with these drivers. I don't think um, there's any going to be any real surprises. And from what I understand, I'm not the only one using them. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's the drivers. Um, so as you guys know, I always try to do a, a cool, interesting cabinet design, and uh, this project will be no different. Fortunately, there's no price limit on cabinet materials, so I can really uh, geek out and um, do something cool. So um, you guys have seen me use this kind of stacked Translam technique. Um, the enthralls, I used it around uh, the sides of the enclosures um, with this kind of interlocking pattern. I really like this interlocking pattern because it uh, generates a really strong joint. Uh, there's, there's no butt joints, everything's overlapping. And uh, I mean, there's butt joints, but they're overlapping. So it creates a much stronger joint than uh, if, if all, you know, the seams are lined up. So, so I'm, I'm doing a translam construction and uh, I'm gonna be stacking layers vertically to create the enclosure from left to right. Um, so here, here's, here's where I'm starting out. So this is some really cool plywood that I found at Aura Lumber. This is actually solid maple plywood. It's, it's about 18 mil thick, so it comes in right around 0.72 inches thick, and it is solid maple all the way through. So it has a nice maple veneer, which I'm not gonna be taking advantage of, but this is extremely strong, dense plywood, and I would consider this even a step up over birch plywood. Um, it's certainly a lot more expensive. As you can see, it's, it's beautiful, it's very void free, and um, this is about $170 a sheet for a four by eight sheet. 
Um, I've already broken it down, but um, it is solid maple. So um, I don't know if you saw my post the other day, but I went and picked up some beautiful figured maple from another local place called Global Source Lumber. Take a look at that. You can see this figure here. So this is rough skip planed. This will really pop once I sand it and finish it. You can see I have four pieces. So I'll be, I'll be using these pieces to cap the sides. So it's gonna be plywood across left to right and then the end caps on each side or the sides will be solid figured maple. Um, and you know, I'll have some bragging rights that this is gonna be a solid maple enclosure even the plywood sold maple. So the first thing I did is I created this template. So this, this template will allow me to create the first layer. And then once I create that first layer, I can, I can stack and build and flush cut. So this is the profile. These are gonna be about 40 inches tall. I have a generous radius at the top here. This is the back, this is the front. So tweeter and woofer will be located here. And this nicely finished template will allow me to generate the first layer of each cabinet. And then from there, I will flush cut each additional layer as I lay them, lay them up. I also created templates. So these are my four templates for, for the four critical pieces. Now uh, you can see this is, this is the construction that I'll be using. So these inner pieces are critical because they have to be exactly the right length, exactly the right angle. And if these two pieces and these two pieces are not referenced to each other, then it'll throw these angles off. There'll be gaps and won't work. So by creating these templates, I have these reference templates for the rivalries and these, a reference for me to go back at any time and make sure that I'm, I'm doing setups and cuts that are the exact dimensions of these. So the first setup is right here. So this is a fi fixture I built and you can see I use these templates. So first piece goes in there and then I have this system here that clamps and then holds these pieces tightly in place so I can make the cut and all the angles here are 45 degrees so I can make my cuts repeated and the exact length isn't as important as the fact that every piece is the same um, so I have these stop blocks here and these holes are slotted. And so I've been able to fine tune these stop blocks. And these, both these pieces are referenced and aligned exactly in the same place. So when I make these cuts, I will put both pieces in here and make the cut and I can be ensured that they're identical. Um, so there's this little feature here where this is kind of a taper that pushes in. There's no slop, there's no movement in this hole. Set up is solid maple and it creates a spring. So it actually holds everything tightly in place. So that's the first fixture. This is the second fixture I built. You can see this is a miter gauge. And so in here, let's get our reference piece. Okay. So when I'm making these cuts, So I can locate the pieces and make perfect cuts every time the same. So uh, I actually used this jig to cut all these pieces. And so these are the production pieces for reference A. And I'll be using those 
to build the enclosure. So these are all pieces that I've cut so far. So all critical uh, dimension pieces are lettered A, B, C, D. And then I have other pieces that aren't critical. These are the outside pieces and these are numbered one through four. And so I have a few more cuts to do. I actually have to go get a little bit more plywood tomorrow because I um, used a little bit more than a sheet. So I'll just need a little bit more. Um, and then uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be building the very first layer using this template, right? And so I'll glue that up and, and create the first layer. And then subsequent layers will stack and each layer will interlock between this pattern and that pattern to create the overlaps, okay? And I don't do any CAD drafting or, I mean, I do it at work. But uh, when I'm building speakers, I don't want to do that. I want to do everything by hand, and I want to do everything out of my head. So these are the extent of the calculations I have. Sometimes I'll do an Excel spreadsheet, but I didn't have the need to do it this time. And um, this, this is enough to guide me. These are all the pieces I'm cutting. The circled ones are finished. I've got 16 out of 22 of D, and I need all 22 pieces for uh, one. And I need 22 of each piece to create uh, 11 layers. Uh, 11 layers will, will generate an eight inch inside dimension of width. And so that all gets me the air volume calculation I need, which is, um, I believe the limit for the contest is 1.3. So I'll be well below that at about 1.1 cubic feet, which gives me a nice flat response to 35 Hertz with this woofer with a, Good power handling of well over 100 watts. So anyways, uh, that's it. This is part one of the Rivalries project. Uh, stay tuned for more as I uh, get more done on these and uh, start posting more pictures of what I'm doing. Again, Rivalries Solid Maple, uh, Rival R176-P-8, and uh, SB Acoustics SB26. STAC dash C004, C000 dash four. So, very popular tweeter. All right, guys, thanks for following along. Appreciate it, and uh, look forward to the next update.